Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna see how we can select and order our data that we're pulling in from a CSV that is in a data frame. Now what we need to do is we have to first pull in our data set. If you haven't been following this series, then you can get this data set down below. It'll be in the GitHub. You can just download it, put it in your file path, and if you don't know how to read in a file, check out my last lesson because that's how you actually work with files, which is right here. You can see how to write files and read in files. Now, let's read in this data frame and let's open it up. So now we have columns like character, department, role, annual salary, dogs rescued with three legs. Very specific column here. But let's start out with just seeing how we can select only specific columns. Then we'll look at only specific rows and then what we're going to do at the end is we'll see how we can order different columns. So let's come back here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull in a library here. And let's go over here to the library. And we want to pull in a library. Now, if we come over to the packages, we don't have a ton pulled in, right? As we're going through here, there's a lot that will, you know, you might want to use that are not in here. And one specifically that we want is dplyr. And that's how I pronounce it at least, uh, but it's D, P, L, Y, and R. This package is specifically made and designed for people like data analysts, data scientists to manipulate and select and query and work with data. So we are going to go ahead and we're gonna run this. Now it's saying there is no package called dplyr. That's not true. There is a package called dplyr. We just need to install it. So we're gonna come up here. We'll go right above it. We're gonna do install dot packages there we go and then we're going to do dplyr i gotta spell that right i deleted everything that i had in r and started from scratch at the beginning of the series so i need to install some packages as well as you can see we just installed dplyr and because of that we have a lot of different options that we didn't have before and specifically we have this one right here this is the grammar of data manipulation if you click on this you can come in here and you can see all that it can do. And it can do a lot of things. And we'll use a lot of these in this series. And so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, pull in that library. We could also just click on this and it would be ready, but I still want to write it in the code. So now we've pulled in that library and we can start using things that are within that library. I'm gonna come back here just to make it look nice again. Now, one of the functions that's within dplyr is select. Let's say we want to only bring in the character and the role column. Those are the only ones we want right now. We can do that by saying select, and we're gonna open this up. We're gonna pass through our data frame, and now we can select what columns we want. So we're gonna say character and role. And let's go ahead and run this. Now we're getting our output right now as just an output in the console, which is perfectly fine. What a lot of people will do is when they're running these select statements is they're gonna assign this to its own data frame, which is fine. Here's what I will say, and I'm gonna start doing it, but here's what I will say. Your data right here and what you're storing in your memory is going to exponentially increase. It's gonna be kind of hard to work with all these different data frames, but I'm gonna say data frame underscore characters and we're gonna assign this, and then we're gonna run it. So now I've created a new data frame with only uh, two columns. Now we have character and role. So we're able to just take the columns that we want. We don't have to take all of them. Now let's say we go back here and we actually want all these columns except for this last one. This last one, we don't really need at all. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna just come down here and we'll do the same thing. We'll pass through our data frame and we're gonna say minus, which means we don't want this column. And let's see what that's called again, dogs rescued with three legs. So I'll say dogs rescued with three legs. And we'll see if, uh, I actually think this is capitalized, but now let's run this. And now you're gonna see all of these columns except the one that we didn't want. Now this seems silly, this seems very you know simple, at least the way I'm looking at it, because we're just getting rid of one column. But in the real world, when I have been working with data in the past, I'll get data from a client, and every single time they send these columns that I just don't care about, 
I don't need. There's no reason they're in there and they take up space. They fill up your database. So they take up your memory, whatever it is. And you just don't want to see it. This would be an example of one that I'm just like, okay, get rid of this column and then we can start looking at it. So then I would assign this to another data frame and then I would only work with that new data frame. I wouldn't work with the original data frame because that one has that dog's rescue with three legs column that we never needed in the first place. We could also get this exact same output by doing something a little bit different. And what we would do is we would say character and then we do this little colon here and that means through and then I believe the last one, let's get rid of this one, is annual salary. So then I would do annual salary. And what this does, is it says, I want this column through this column. And then if we run this, it's again not going to include that last one because it is not in between character and annual salary. So that's how we're able to specify what columns we want. But I think more importantly is actually selecting what data we want. So what rows of data we actually want to keep in our output. So let's come down here and we're going to say filtering. Now filtering data is super important. You don't always want all the data or you want some subsection of the data. So what we can do is we're going to come right down here and we're going to say filter. And filter is going to allow us to create a specific condition. If it is met, then those rows will be returned. If it is not met, then it will not be returned. So again, we're going to pass through our data frame. But for this one, let's take a look where annual salary is greater than, and let's say 50,000. So we're going to do 50, 1, 2, 3. So we're only going to filter on annual salary where it's greater than 50,000. Now, if you look in our output, we have an annual salary here, and none of them are going to be lower than 50,000. This is using our comparison operators here. So we have other comparison operators that we can use. For example, we could do right here. We want to say where the role is equal to, and now we're looking at a string. We can just say they're a director. And if we run this, there's only going to be one person who's a director, and that's Ron Swanson. Now you'll notice that we also have a different director. We have Ron Swanson, who's our director, but also Leslie Nope is technically a director too, but it isn't a specific match here. Now, there is a specific function that is kind of like regular expression. It searches for a specific pattern. It's called grepl. And we can use that. We can say grepl. And we're going to pass through director. Now, the only thing we have to do apart from that is we're also going to specify what column we're looking in, which is role. And we'll close our parentheses. So now we're looking for the word director in this role column. If it's anywhere in there, it's going to return it. So now if we run this, it's not just director. Now we have deputy director as well because it was just searching for that keyword. And so if it contains director anywhere in this role column, we are going to find it. Now when we're filtering data, we typically aren't just filtering on one thing or, you know, sometimes you are, but sometimes we have multiple things. Let's go ahead and let's put this filter down here. I should have kept the uh, previous one. I'll write it again. So we're going to do where the annual salary is greater than 50,000. And that's 5,000. And let's just run this. But we also only want to see where their department is parks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a logical operator, which is our ampersand. And we're going to say where the annual salary is greater than 50,000 and... Then we'll create another condition. We're going to say where their department is equal to parks. Now let's run this. And you'll see now we have all the annual salaries greater than 50,000 and where their department is equal to parks. So we can have multiple conditions in here and we can either have an and or an or in order to specify what we're looking for. Now, right now we're just filtering and before we were just selecting, let's see how we can combine these. And this is gonna be a little bit more advanced and we'll get to a lot of this in the next several lessons. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called a pipe operator. So we're gonna take our data frame and we're gonna build our pipe operator. This says, take the data frame and then. So what are we gonna do next? We're gonna select just this data set. So let's bring this back. So we're taking our data frame and then we're only selecting character through annual salary. So we don't have that last column. 
And then we're going to add this pipe operator as well. And then we'll say, do this. Ants format a little better. So this is kind of how you add multiple things on top of another. So we're going to take our data frame. We're going to say, and then select only these columns. And then we're going to filter it down like this. So let's run this right here. And actually, we're getting an error because uh, we don't need to pass through these data frames anymore. Because we are already specifying at the very beginning, take this data frame and then select just this data. If we do it, if we keep passing through the data frame, it kind of gets wonky. Because it's like, yes, I already know I'm supposed to be using the data frame. So it gets confused. But this right here is how we kind of chain these together. Now we only have these four columns and only with those conditions being met. Now the last thing that we're going to look at, and I'm going to actually put this down here. I'm going to say, uh, this is our, called our pipe operator. I'm going to put this down here and up here I'm going to say ordering. And once we add ordering and see how we can order it, we're going to add it down here into kind of our chain is what we're going to call it. Now for ordering data, let's take this right here. We're going to look at our annual salary. Let's say we wanted to order it like this, lowest to highest. That's very easy to do when you're looking at the data in here, but there's a hundred different reasons why you need to actually order it in your code. And so let's come over here and we're going to use a range. Again, this is in within dplyr, even says it right here. This is how you order the rows of your data. So we're going to say a range. And what we need to do, of course, is pass through our data frame. But then we're going to specify what column do we want to order it on. We're going to say annual. I need to spell right. I'm not spelling right at all. Annual salary. And then if we run this, you'll notice right up here that the annual salary is from lowest to highest. So by default, it is ascending, which means lowest to highest. But we can reverse that to do highest to lowest. Let's say, uh, let's do lower cat, lowercase actually. Uh, let's pass through this annual salary. Give me one sec. So now we're saying take the annual salary, but do it from highest to lowest. That's what descending means. It's going to be the exact same thing, except the opposite. So we have lowest to highest here. So now let's go back to our pipe operator area where we've chained these all together. Now we have all this information, but I want to order it by annual salary right here. So I'm going to take uh, this and I'm going to say, oops, my pipe. And I'm going to paste this in but I have to get rid of this data frame again. So now I'm saying take our data frame, select these columns, filter on these conditions, and then arrange them with annual salary descending. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. So we have our output that we're looking for, and we filtered down by a ton of different stuff while selecting columns, rows, and ordering our data all in just one kind of easily readable code. And so that's how we select, filter, and order our data, specifically using that dplyr package that is something that's very popular and very common to use within R. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my full R course on analystbuilder.com. I will leave a link in the description with a coupon code if you are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.